Chapter 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Human Observation Program All of Humanity is Missing Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Hello, everyone. Welcome to Humans on Camera. I'm the host, Maggie. This program was created by the top 10 financial groups in the world. There are a total of five contestants participating in the first season of this program. All five of them are adult males with different occupations. They are from the United States, Japan, Korea, the United Kingdom, and Russia. The team has spent a lot of effort to evacuate everyone except for the contestants from the cities where the contestants were located, creating the illusion that humans have suddenly disappeared. The purpose of the program is to observe the behavior of the contestants from different countries under such a background deadline. Three months this program was jointly created by the top 10 consortiums. The credibility of the program guarantees that every contestant does not know about it and there will be no trust. After the program ends, the contestants who do not know will be compensated financially. Next, I will introduce five contestants. 8 a.m. In the International Live Broadcast Room. The Humans on Camera program which had been promoted for nearly half a year commenced as scheduled. Many people around the world were watching the live broadcast with their cell phones or in front of their computers. The female host, Maggie, had a professional smile on her face. She introduced the general situation of the reality show to the audience. After introducing the premise of the program, she began to introduce the contestants. The first contestant is Raymond from the United States. He is 22 years old today and has a high school education. He is currently unemployed. Five images appeared on the screen behind Maggie. She pointed at one of the young men. He was blonde and fair. The young man was lying on the bed with his eyes closed. It was obvious that he had not woken up from his deep sleep. Raymond was born in the slums. Both of his parents died, and he was often bullied when he was studying. Under such circumstances, would he be hostile to society? What would happen if he's alone in a city? Then, there was the second person. The second person is an elite worker from Japan. His name is Miyoshi Yamada. The third person is Park Hyun Datyo, a popular Korean celebrity. The fourth person is a best-selling Russian novelist, Zyman Wierenski. The fifth person is the chairman of a British company, Aaron Bob. The five contestants appeared one by one. At this moment, all five of them were in a deep sleep and had not woken up. Naturally, they did not know that there was no one else in the city that they were in. These five contestants came from different countries and were engaged in different professions. They have all been gathered together in this program. Actually, if one were to look closely, one would find that one of them did not fit in with the others. It was the American contestant, Raymond. The contestants from other countries were either chairmen of companies or best dot selling novelists. At the very least, the man would be a white dot collar elite. Raymond was a person from the slums, a person at the bottom of society, an unemployed vagrant. He was actually able to participate in the program with this group of elite people. Actually, the reason behind this was well dot known around the world. This program had been jointly created by the consortia. Their real goal was to see the child from the slums lose face. They wanted to see this young man named Raymond make a fool of himself, hoping to criticize the poor based on his actions where they would assume he was doing as he pleased. From there on, the juxtaposition of his actions would show their sense of superiority and nobility as rich people. As we all know, human nature is inherently evil, and people are born with bad personalities, however, through the nurture of education, one could make people lock up the ferocious beasts in their hearts and show their kind and cultured sides. However, I don't think that this low-dot-class person named Raymond, born in the slums, would have such an upbringing and show his kind side. His inferiority has been carved into his bones. From the moment he was born, it was already destined. On the internationally famous social media app, 
On Twitter. The World Special Observer, Allen uploaded a new post. Between the lines, he did not hide his contempt and belittlement for Raymond. Once this tweet was posted, it immediately received hundreds of thousands of likes and retweets. There were even close to a million comments. Many people agreed with his point of view. How long do you think this poor boy named Raymond would be able to hold on without making a fool of himself? I think two days is already the limit. It might even be one day. Have more confidence, brother. I have a script here. When Raymond discovers that the entire human race has disappeared in the morning, he will do whatever he wants in the afternoon. If you don't believe me, just wait and see. The comments section was filled with a large number of similar comments. Although the show had just officially started and Raymond had yet to wake up and take action, these people couldn't wait to see him make a fool of himself. Each and every word they uttered reduced the young man from the slums to dust. Dot after all, everyone knew what a slum was. It was synonymous with dirt and grime, filled with evil and low dot lives. People who came out of such a place would not be able to do anything good in a society that was not bound by laws and morals. Of course. There were also people who came out of the slums among the audience. They refuted the above remarks. However, such voices were too few. They carried no impact. Chapter 2 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The entire human race observes Raymond. Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation Among the five contestants, almost everyone spoke of Raymond with ridicule and disdain. The other four contestants were mostly praised and boasted about. Dot, humph, people of the world, just you watch. Our Park Hyun. Yo Appa will definitely be the most outstanding and unique. He would show up everyone else. Baka, our country's Yamada Kafu is the most outstanding. F asterisk CK, our British Empire's Chairman Bob was born of nobility. He has received the highest level of education ever since he was young. He will be exemplary. They bragged about their country's contestants as if they were very confident in them. However, I'm wondering now if the program team's preparation really that meticulous. When the five of them wake up, would they discover us outside? Someone posted and voiced his doubts. After all, the cost of creating a Truman's world was too high, and all aspects had to be considered. There was no guarantee that there would be any mistakes. Moreover, are these people really unaware? In one night, an entire city is emptied except for the contestants themselves. With so much work involved how would the contestant even remain unaware? I suspect that Raymond was a scapegoat. He might have received benefits from the program team and acted out a show where he could do whatever he wanted, giving some people a reason to attack the poor people in these slums. The official account of the Humans on Camera program team made an appearance. In response to these comments, they made a special response and posted a long message on Twitter. First of all, the moment we chose Raymond, we had already begun to plan out the sequence. It has been almost a year now. During this period, anyone or anything that Raymond encounters has been carefully arranged by us. We cannot let him know of our existence. As for his daily surfing on the internet, we have top hackers who specialize in modifying information. What he sees on the internet is only what we want him to see. Therefore, Raymond would not know of the existence of this program. As for the evacuation of the entire city's population, apart from the contestants, our evacuation plan was actually done in batches. We were committed to creating the sudden disappearance of humans. We didn't really mean to evacuate the entire city's population overnight. But Raymond would not realize that the process of the evacuation had been done in batches. The same is for the other four contestants. In addition, the program team had spent a lot of money on mock dot ups and special effects. It is impossible for an ordinary person to find any flaws within three months. Moreover, the five contestants are all in an island city. All the large vehicles in the city have been destroyed, so it is impossible for the contestants to leave. 
As for whether Raymond had been asked to cooperate and stage an act, there are so many top psychologists in the world watching. There would always be flaws in the acting. If ever discovered, it would only bring negative effects to the program team. So everyone can rest assured. In the comments section of this content, several world.class psychologists spoke up and said that they would monitor it. This also made some viewers feel at ease. As time slowly passed. Under the gaze of countless people around the world, Raymond slowly opened his eyes and sat up. He had blonde hair and blue eyes, a high nose bridge, and deep eyes, making his gaze particularly profound. As he sat up, the quilt on his upper body slid down, revealing his well-dot-proportioned and well-dot-shaped muscles. The undulating lines had a sense of beauty. Look, he's awake, he's awake. The contestant from the slums is the first to wake up. Baka, the lowly person is the first to wake up. Why isn't Akio Yamada awake yet? Not to mention, putting aside his background, I actually think that little brother Raymond is very handsome. Looking at the muscles on his body, it means that he should be a self-disciplined person. Hiss. I'm craving this body. Don't F asterisk king inhale anymore. If you continue to inhale the spiritual energy of the entire world, it will all be gone. At this moment, the global audience exploded. Raymond woke up and casually put on two pieces of clothes. He got up and got out of bed. Pulling open the curtains, the soft sunlight outside shone on his body, making him feel warm. A new day had begun. Raymond washed himself up. Then, he took out a piece of bread and heated up a glass of milk. This was breakfast. What he didn't know was that his series of actions had been completely recorded by the surveillance cameras. 360 degrees. No blind spots. At this moment, in the international live broadcast room. This is Raymond's home. The program team has meticulously arranged nearly a thousand miniature pinhole cameras here, observing Raymond's every move without blind spots. The host, Maggie, introduced to the audience, in order not to be exposed, these cameras have been set up in an extremely secretive manner, using the most advanced technology in the world. As she finished her sentence, the bullet comments in the international live broadcast room immediately boiled over. F asterisk CK, this incident has already violated the human rights and privacy of the contestants. Think about it. If you were in your own home, there would be countless cameras in the corner, monitoring everything around you 24 hours a day without any blind spots, and letting the entire world watch. How terrifying would that be? Yeah, just thinking about it gives me the creeps. Chapter 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Where did everyone go? Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless fantasy translation Some people thought that the program team was inhumane and violated the contestants' privacy. Of course, others expressed the opposite opinion. Human rights. Privacy. I'm dying of laughter. To have such a good opportunity to show his face in front of the whole world is a treatment that no international superstar has ever received before. Hurry up and be secretly happy. Yeah, I can imagine that after the program ends, Raymond, who was born in the slums, will be known by the whole world. Being an internet celebrity will also earn him a lot of money. His fate will be completely turned around. Why would he care about this little bit of privacy? Ah she, I'm jealous. Why am I not the one having his face shown around the entire world? I suggest that the Korean brother up there sign up. Maybe he will choose you for the second season. Sigh, but no matter what, I still hope that Raymond performs better. Otherwise, this handsome guy will lose face in front of the whole world. America, the slums. In a dilapidated house. Many people were watching this scene on television. The atmosphere was silent. Why did this program team choose Raymond? A refined dot looking young man broke the silence and asked. It was a random pick. The program team wanted one of these contestants to come from the slums. 
even if they didn't choose Raymond, some other Tom, Dick or Harry would be in his place. It couldn't be helped. Someone said. Bang. A man with a full beard slapped the table and scolded, they're not people. These rich people are really not people. F asterisk CK, they're toying with us. He did not know Raymond. But as a person from the slums, he felt the same. On the surface, the consortium wanted to humiliate Raymond, but indirectly, they were going to humiliate the tens of thousands of slums. All right, don't be so angry. After all, the world belongs to the rich. They are the ones who can do whatever they want. They are not bound by the law and are not under the jurisdiction of morality. And we exist only to make up the numbers, that's all. Just let it go and get used to it. An elderly man glanced at the bearded man indifferently. His voice was monotone and matter dot of dot factly. However, everyone present could hear the sorrow in his voice. The sorrow of being at the bottom of society. They had no room to resist. They could only become a chess piece for the rich to play with. They had no choice and were helpless. Now that things have come to this, we can only hope that this child from the slums performs decently. Just decently will do. From this, we can show the world that the poor of the slums are not so bad. The old man sighed and said why didn't they hope that Raymond would perform exceptionally well and slap the faces of those rich people. Because of human nature. Humans understood humans the most. In the absence of any restrictions, under the circumstances where everything was allowed, the cage that imprisoned the ferocious beast in the human heart would be opened. This beast would be released and run wild at will, which was inevitable. Therefore, as the program developed, it would only worsen. They only hoped that Raymond was not so bad. Raymond ate his breakfast and went to his computer. Living in this city, Raymond had no parents and no job. He could only rely on private work to earn some money to feed himself. The day before yesterday, he had received an order to draw a game illustration for a client, and this morning was the deadline for submission. There were still some details that had not been perfected. Raymond turned on the computer. Half an hour later, the illustration was completed. Raymond saved a sample and sent it to the other party on the chat software. After waiting for a long time, there was no reply. Raymond was a little surprised. Although it was the weekend, he had made an appointment with the client yesterday, so there was no reason for the client not to reply. In order not to delay things, Raymond decided to call the other party. D. The call went through, but no one answered until the dial tone changed. Raymond guessed that the other party had something to do, so he planned to contact the other party later. It was at this time. He felt that something was wrong. It was too quiet. Across the street from where he lived was a wide street. If it were any other time, there would already be cars coming and going, the roar of the engines and horns. Children lived next door, and they would have started to play. But today, there was no movement at all. It was abnormal. Raymond walked to the balcony. The street was empty. Raymond noticed three cars parked in the right lane as if waiting for a red light, but now it was a green light. Why weren't they moving? Also, why were the cars all empty? Where were the drivers? A sea breeze blew. Not far away, a billboard was tottering and could fall at any time. But no one was maintaining it. Where was he? Where did he go? Raymond frowned and walked out of the house to the street. These two cars were specially arranged by the program team, and so is the billboard next to it. The purpose is to have the contestants discover the disappearance of human beings faster through these arrangements. In the international live broadcast room, the host, Maggie, explained. Good guy, I know you'd call him a good guy. In order to let the contestants integrate into their roles as soon as possible, the program team has put in a lot of effort. It's not only a lot of effort to get the whole city to play along, but also a lot of money. I think so. I'm the owner of the two cars. They're both used cars. 
the program team gave me $20,000. I'm a resident of the city where the contestants live. The program team gave me $9,000. Hiss, the top 10 consortia are indeed rich. One person's blood letter will come to a city in the second season. I'll do my part for the program team. The audience discussed animatedly. Their gazes once again focused on Raymond. At this time, Raymond was walking around the streets, but not a soul was in sight. He made a call. He tried to call a client again, but no one picked up. He called a few friends, but no one picked up. He called the police, but no one picked up either. Then he entered the supermarket, cafe, bar, school. No one, still no one. Raymond's face became more and more serious. The situation was all too wrong. Raymond sat down on the steps in front of the cafe, opened Twitter, and wanted to ask about the situation here. However, he noticed that the latest post was last night. From the time this post was posted until now, nearly 10 hours had passed, and no new posts had appeared. Raymond's fingers were trembling, but he still worked on typing a post and posted it. Raymond's phone has an internet connection, but every app on his phone is custom.made. Even if he released this post, he wouldn't get any response. The contestants have been thrown into the full immersion of the sudden disappearance of human beings. Host Maggie explained at this time. After Ramon posted the tweet, he waited for a long time, but no one replied. He got up and decided to walk on. Chapter 4 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Survival Assistance System Activated. Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation Turning a Corner. Raymond was stunned by what he saw. On the main road not far away, there were dozens of cars parked. Some of them had been hit by a car crash and were completely mangled. Other cars had even rammed into the shop next to them. But that was not the most important thing. The most important thing was. There was no one there. Raymond's heart was pounding as a bold thought appeared in his mind. Could it be that? All of humanity. Disappeared at the same time. Raymond was shocked by his own thought. This was just like SC identify. It was too unreal. Only in fantasy novels or SCI.fi movies would such a situation occur. In the real world, Raymond would never believe that such a situation would occur. However, he could not explain what was happening before his eyes and what he was experiencing today. He could not explain it. Raymond looked around in a daze. At that moment. In his mind. A cold mechanical voice sounded. Survival assistance system is activating. The good stuff is going to happen now. At this moment, contestant Raymond should be able to make a preliminary conclusion that the entire human race has suddenly disappeared. As the first contestant to notice this, we'll see what Raymond does next. Maggie's voice rang out at the right time. Hearing her words, the audience couldn't help but focus their attention. They were also looking forward to what Raymond would do next. The Prophet's family has arrived. I guess Raymond will take off his clothes and run around unrestrained. He will experience the pleasure of being unhindered and unrestrained. I think he will go to all kinds of shops and wreak havoc. After all, the people in the slums are all brutal. I guess he will climb to the roof of the residential building and stand still, shooting his load over the entire city. Be bold, brother. Can't he do that while walking? Bullsh asterisk t, bullsh asterisk t. In a house in the slums. I hope he doesn't do anything strange. This is a live broadcast in front of the entire human race. Even if he has some thoughts, he should at least have some final form of restraint. System. When Raymond heard this voice in his mind, he was stunned. As a person who had read many online novels, he naturally knew what a system was. The main characters in those novels would obtain all kinds of systems, and their lives would take off. And today, would he also have a system? 
system activation successful. The mechanical voice sounded in Raymond's mind. Without waiting for him to react, the system continued to speak. Hello, host. The system has something to tell you first. In a month's time, a huge meteorite will hit the Earth's core, causing the destruction of the species. Hearing this, Raymond was stunned on the spot, his heart in shock. Eh, what's wrong with him? He looks a little shocked. Did he discover something? Seeing Raymond stunned, the program team was also shocked. They quickly carried out all sorts of tests to see if there was a mistake. He must have used his imagination to confirm that humans had suddenly disappeared, and now he's thinking about how to vent. Of course he's venting his anger. After breaking free from the shackles of society, people often do things that they wanted to do but didn't dare to do in the past. No, only the poor people who came from slums would do that. People like us who came from noble backgrounds and received higher tier educations wouldn't do that. Humph, the citizens of the Dei Empire are all well educated, and they won't vent their anger recklessly. The citizens of the Korean Empire are the same. Oh right, I suggest that the program team arrange for female characters to enter so that they can observe Raymond's violent actions. F asterisk CK. This suggestion is awesome. I support it. I support plus one. The sudden disappearance of humans and the collapse of social order. There were no legal restrictions and no moral restrictions. A man from a slum meeting a woman. The plot was exciting just thinking about it. Regarding this suggestion. Maggie explained, such female characters will definitely be arranged. This is also part of the program team's plan, but not now. No matter what, we have to wait until the five contestants have their respective meltdowns before we can arrange for them to appear. It had to be said. The program team had a good grasp of human nature. The program, Human on Camera, at first glance, seemed very innovative and attracted a lot of viewers. However, as things developed, it would be discovered that each contestant only did so much back and forth. The viewers would feel tired just by watching this. Three months was neither long nor short. It would definitely lose a portion of the audience. And at this time, it was time for the female character to go on stage. And at this time. In Raymond's mind, the system's voice continued to ring. The meteorite is about the size of the United States. Moreover, with its durability, all the weapons on Earth will not cause much damage to it. The extinction of the species is unstoppable. On the street, the sun was warm, but Raymond felt as if he was in winter. His entire body was cold. The meteorite was the size of the United States. Incomparably hard. Indestructible. There was still a month's time. In a month's time, the end was coming. But this matter, did it have something to do with the sudden disappearance of the human race at the same time? Could it be? The world leaders had known about this long ago, but for various reasons, they did not announce it. Yesterday, they used a spaceship to carry the entire human race away. And they left him here. But, something was not right. They took everyone away and left him here. A spaceship could not possibly lack space for one occupant, right? That meant that the spaceship took away most of the people and left a small portion of them on Earth star. That was not right either. They were still fine last night and there was not a single sign of trouble. Raymond could not figure it out, so he simply stopped thinking about it. In short, the situation now was that everyone had left, leaving him alone. But now, he had to find a way to survive. At this time. In the international live broadcast room. The other four contestants woke up one after another. They attracted most of the attention. B. Nov Com these four contestants' performances were similar to Raymond's at the beginning. They got up, washed up, and had breakfast. When they realized that something was wrong, they walked out of their rooms to observe. There were two cars waiting for the red light without a driver, and there was also a shaky billboard. On the main road not far away, 
there were also dozens of cars parked. Some had been rear.ended, and some others had crashed into the shop next to them. The program team had arranged the initial scene for each contestant to be the same. Chapter 5 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The show has begun. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Look, the chairman of the British company is indeed an aristocrat. He received a higher education since young. After he confirmed that all of humanity had disappeared, he did not panic at all. This is a state that ordinary people can never attain. He is confident and calm. The Russian novelist is not bad, but he is a little weird. Is he thinking of a novel? How can this be? He's writing a novel. With the sudden disappearance of the entire human race, coupled with the overcast sky and dark clouds in his city, it looks like the end of the world. What could be more inspiring than this scene? Ah ah ah, our Park Hyun.yo Appa is also performing very well. He even greeted the stray cats by the roadside. His smile is simply dazzling. He's so caring. Ah ah ah, I'm coming. The one in front, did he climax? Our great sun empire's Yamada Chofu also performed. Eh. Baka, what is he doing? The Japanese were just about to boast about their country's contestant when they noticed that Yamada Chofu suddenly picked up an iron rod from the ground. He smashed it hard against the vehicle in front of him and let out a low roar. This scene stunned the audience. No one expected that the first person to make a fool of himself would be this gentle dot looking man from Japan. The sudden outburst of Mio Yamada shocked the audience. When the host, Maggie, introduced this person, many people thought that he should be the one performing the best. He was a white dot collar elite. He was usually kind and conscientious in his work, and he had no bad records in his life. He didn't seem like a person with a devil in his heart. However, he never expected such a person, one who was favored by many people, to be the first to make a fool of himself. Baka. Baka. Seeing him smash a car with an iron rod, the bullet screens in the international live broadcast room exploded. D asterisk MN. This contestant from Japan is amazing. How much pressure does he actually suffer from? What did the Great Japan Empire do to him? I heard that there are many people in Japan who treat others humbly and courteously. Are they all like this behind their backs? It's too scary, too scary. Looking at these bullet comments, the Japanese audience could not sit still. They were furious, but they did not know how to refute these bullet comments. They could only vent their anger on their own contestant. Baka, why did the program team choose this person? I want to protest. I want to protest with the program team. We want to change the person. Her her. Some of the audience members from other countries ridiculed him. It's the same even if we change the person again. Don't struggle anymore. Although a person's actions are only caused by his own thoughts, to a certain extent, it can also reflect the social situation in which he lives. Today, we understand the Japanese society. The bullet screen was densely packed. The Japanese audience was furious. The people from other countries were just watching the show, fanning the flames from time to time. For a time, the atmosphere was very lively. System, then do you have a way to destroy the meteorite? On the other side, Raymond asked in his heart. After accepting the sudden disappearance of humans and the fact that the meteorite was about to hit the earth, Raymond naturally had to think of a way to survive. It was impossible for him alone to remain unscathed in the upcoming mass extinction of the species. However, he had the system. Host, the system is unable to destroy the meteorite, but it can help the host build a spaceship. Within a month, before the meteorite hits the Earth's core, Build it as soon as possible and escape from the earth. Building a spaceship. Raymond was a little dumbfounded, he had not expected the system to come up with such a proposal. Very quickly, he realized a problem. One month, is there enough time? 
As long as we follow the steps given by the system, there would be no problems. Then let's start now. Raymond asked. He did not inquire about the step dot by dot step details. He would know in the future. Even if the system told him now, he would not be able to understand it. He knew nothing about construction. The host is responsible for executing the system's skills. Also, considering the host's learning ability, it is impossible for him to learn a large amount of content in such a short period of time. So, the system will provide the host with help, allowing the host to learn all the knowledge about building a spaceship in a short period of time. Next, please head to the library. Raymond didn't hesitate at all. He walked straight to the library. In the international live broadcast room. It seems that contestant Raymond has decided what to do. The show is about to begin. Everyone, what do you think he will do? Maggie saw that Raymond was walking in a clear direction, so she said. After all, the real purpose of this show was to see this young man from the slums make a fool of himself. Therefore, he was the focus of everyone's attention. I think he will go to a luxurious place and experience the luxuries of a rich man. After all, according to his previous life trajectory, he wouldn't have such an opportunity in a few lifetimes. He might rob a bank. Although money doesn't mean anything to him now, robbing a bank is still very enjoyable. Or he might find a military base and launch missiles all over the place to destroy it. Actually, I think that the most important things to Raymond are food and water. He would probably go and store them. I think that he might find something and throw it at the vehicles. Japan Yamada has lost face. Don't try to hide it. Thank you. Baka Baka The world.renowned commentator, actually, no matter how much Raymond vents his anger, I wouldn't be surprised, because this goes along with my understanding of the slums. In addition, I think the program team is trying to fully simulate the background of the world where humans suddenly disappeared. Now, they even arranged for a plane crash. Has everyone noticed a passenger plane in the sky? When humans suddenly disappear, the plane cannot stop. When the fuel runs out, it will naturally crash. When this plane crashes around Raymond, he will definitely confirm this matter. F asterisk CK. That's true. This plane crash had been arranged by the program team. In order to ensure a 100% certainty, the program team had gotten the big shots up there to spend a lot of money and arrange such a thing. It was also because Raymond had been in a daze earlier that the program team was uncertain. And... In order to make Raymond completely believe that humans had suddenly disappeared, the program team still had plans to follow. These plans were all consistent with the series of events that would result from the sudden disappearance of humans. Moreover, there was a special psychological expert team to analyze Raymond's expressions. If anything goes wrong, they jump into a new plan. They made sure the show remained foolproof. Chapter 6 You are listening at NovelFull.audio What does Raymond want to do? Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation While the audience had a discussion in the live broadcast room, Raymond came to a library door. Seeing the situation, the audience was stunned. A library. He wasn't going to a luxurious place, or a military base, or to stock up on food. He actually went to a library. Is he crazy? Would any normal person make such a choice? He can't be thinking of studying, right? What the f asterisk ck? Has he not studied in his entire life or something? f asterisk ck? How can he do that? Just as Raymond was about to go up the stairs and enter the library, he seemed to notice something and suddenly raised his head. He saw a passenger plane falling from the sky and landing not too far away from him. Boom. With a loud crash, the plane exploded. It felt like the earth shook as the flames rose up. Raymond could even feel a faint heat wave coming toward him. His expression changed. It was likely that the humans had suddenly disappeared. 
Hence, the flying plane had run out of fuel due to being pilotless, causing it to crash. Since there was the first plane, there would be a second plane. And a third plane. This plane had landed around him. The next plane might land a few thousand miles away from him. Of course. It could also hit him. It was dangerous. Raymond's expression changed. When it came down to it, though, the plane's landing point was random. In other words, no matter where he was, he might be hit. It was better for him to study first. So, Raymond walked into the library. System, how do I learn? Where should I start? Responding to host. Since you do not know anything about building a spaceship, I suggest that you learn the basic theory of the maneuvering system first. The system will automatically help you activate the super learning state. Under the super learning state, your brain will be 10 times more developed than that of a normal person. Raymond's heart was beating wildly. 10 times that of a normal person. That was amazing. The system's voice continued to ring out. However, the duration of the super learning state depends on the host's mental strength. If it is activated for too long, the host will faint. In addition, the system still has the ultimate learning state, but that requires even more mental strength. Depending on the host's situation, the host will choose to activate it. Now, activate the super learning state to adapt to it. On his side, Raymond was communicating with the system. Meanwhile, in the international live broadcast room, Raymond's target really is the library. Why don't we guess what he's about to do? Maggie sounded a little confused, as she did not know what Raymond wanted to do. I think he's trying to find some information on survival. After all, with the disappearance of human beings, he needs to survive better in this world. The only thing that can help him is knowledge, someone commented. Yeah, I think so too. Dot. With the human's sudden disappearance, nature will certainly claim the city again. When that time comes, this place will be a stage for survival in the wild. Maggie looked at the dot bullet screen dot and interacted with the audience in the live broadcast room. That's true, but it will take many years for nature to cover the city again. However, there will be less food available, and the process of finding nourishment will be more difficult. This is a very urgent situation. I think in the event of the human's disappearance, we should first find food and water. Then, we have to build a shelter to shield against wild beast attacks. The host is right. This contestant has a long-term vision, but it's useless. What long-term vision? It's just useless work. As expected of someone from the slums who can never grasp the main point. Even if an opportunity is created for someone like him, he'll subconsciously give it up. I think he's just doing things on a whim. After reading for a while, he'll automatically give up. Actually, I think the program team should give him some guidance or hints to push him. No way, that's too horrible. Even if he doesn't have such thoughts, he still has to force himself to do it. Why are your hearts so dark? Do you realize that this contestant's behavior is not what you expected? Do you feel like you've been slapped in the face? Heh, yeah, I think it's because Raymond has performed too well. Some people obviously can't sit still. Look at the other four contestants. Shifting to the other four contestants. There was Miyoshi Yamada from Japan. After destroying several cars in a row, he turned to smash a cafe's glass window before destroying all the glass on the premises. Then, he panted as he squatted at a junction and looked at his masterpiece with a satisfied smile. He seemed unpredictable, and the audience felt a little uncomfortable watching him. It was because his current appearance was so different from his previous one that they could not accept it for a moment. This person. This person has performed the least so far in the program. What will he do in the next? Be asterisk starred. Be asterisk starred. Be asterisk starred. As for the Japanese audience, they were already extremely angry. Miyoshi Yamada obviously did not participate in the program for himself but for the country that was behind him, Japan. 
This time, Japan had lost face in front of the entire world. Those who had boasted about Miyoshi Yamada how would perform the best had flushed faces at that moment. It was as if they had been thrashed a few times. Ha! Huh. Quick, look, that Korean celebrity's heading toward the police station. What's he going to do? Following the appearance of this bullet on the screen, the world's audience turned their eyes to the Korean contestant, Park Hyun Datyo. They saw him carrying an orange cat in his arms as he approached the police station's main entrance. After hour. Appa Dot confirmed that the humans had disappeared, he knew that some ferocious beasts would come because no one was watching over them. The danger level has increased, and... Appa Dot just doesn't want to face this potential danger, so he should be looking for guns to protect himself. Ha <laughs> that's hilarious. Protect himself. I would like to see if Park Hyun Datyo is trying to do that. Park Hyun Datyo entered the police station, found a gun, and gently stroked it for a while. Then, he loaded the gun with ammunition and came to the orange cat's side. Just when the audience thought that Park Hyun Datyo was going to pick the orange cat up again and leave, he pointed the gun's muzzle at the orange cat's head. Then, he pulled the trigger. Bang! A gunshot was heard. Following the gunshot, the audience's bodies shook, and the bullet curtain fell silent for a few seconds. The contrast was too great. It never occurred to anyone that such a well-known celebrity, who had been famous all over South Korea, had been hiding his true colors so well in front of the public. Now, without warning, he had shot an orange cat in the head. As they looked at the orange cat, which had lost its head, continue to writhe around, all the audience members felt a chill run down their spines. This is the famous celebrity that you've been bragging about. This is your Appa Dot who has a nice smile and is super caring. We Our Appa Dot didn't want the orange cat to be eaten by other ferocious beasts and suffer the pain of being eaten alive. That's why he let it die without suffering. F asterisk CK how can you explain this away? I'm throwing up. In the past, I only heard that there were too many brainless fans in Korea. However, I would never believe something until I see it. Today, I've seen it for myself. The netizens then engaged in a battle of words in the international live broadcast room. Chapter 7 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Did he really think that he could build a rocket? Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation The morning had not even been over since the program began. However, two people had already shown their savage side. The Russian novelist was also showing signs of collapse. He suddenly grabbed the manuscript of his hand-written novel and tore it into pieces with both hands. With a wave of his hand, he threw it into the air. Then he looked at the empty table, lost in thought. The chairman of the British company, Aaron Bob, was in the supermarket, putting food into a backpack. After he took the food, he kicked the shelf. Right then, the bullet screen became lively again. The audience shifted their attention back to Raymond, who was reading a book. The title of the book was, Basic Theory of Motorized Systems. The audience was dumbfounded. What was going on? Holy sh asterisk t, has he really gone crazy? I've thought of countless possibilities. I assumed that he was going to read adult materials and survival books. I wouldn't even be too surprised if he wanted to learn mathematics. But now, he's actually reading on the theory of motorized systems. What is he planning to do? No, I just want to know what he can do with such knowledge. Is there anyone who can explain it to me? I have an idea, but I can't explain it. You better find someone else. This is really f asterisk king hilarious. The world's guest commentator said, I'm not surprised at contestant Raymond's actions. After all, how many people from the slums have normal brains? His behavior is extremely in line with his upbringing. Actually, I think that Raymond has already broken down. He fell apart earlier than any other contestant. However, 
the way he's broken down isn't like that of most people. It's more like a silent breakdown. Since it's not a large dot scale breakdown, he's not particularly violent. Many people agreed with this point of view. They thought that Raymond had really crumbled. After all, it was one thing for him to learn the basic theory of motorized systems, but he had even flipped through the abnormal sections. It could be said that he was read ten lines with each glance. What could he learn by reading this way? What could he learn? Soon, he finished flipping through the thick book. Raymond put the basic theory of motorized systems aside and stretched. He looked at the time. Only ten minutes had passed. Time did not seem to pass quickly. Yet, when he was immersed in the super-learning state earlier, time seemed to pass very quickly. It felt like more than ten hours had gone by. During that period of time, he had fully comprehended the information in the basic theory of motorized systems. He had many ideas in his mind. He knew that this was due to the system's help. System, what should I do next? Raymond asked in his heart. Host, please consolidate the knowledge that you have learned and draw the design of the rocket engine. A rocket engine and a spaceship engine have something in common. However, the engine of a spaceship is thousands of times more precise than the engine of a rocket. Your current knowledge is not sufficient for you to draw the design of a spaceship engine. Therefore, let us start with a rocket engine. Raymond understood. It was like walking and running. Even though both of them required the use of legs, people naturally had to learn how to walk before they could learn how to run. There needed to be a step dot by dot step process. After all, one bite could not make a man fat. No doubt, it was impossible to build a spaceship. It was a process of going from zero to one. Raymond later found a stack of A4 papers in the library and placed four or five pieces on the ground. Basically, a huge area was needed to mark out a rocket engine. A single piece of paper was too small for the sketch. Dot after he put them together, he taped them together on the back so that the whole thing would not move. He also found some auxiliary tools such as a compass ruler and some pencils. Fortunately, it was the largest library in the city. There were all kinds of tools and books inside. Otherwise, Raymond would have been in a difficult position. Once everything was ready, he took out a pencil and began to draw on the first A4 paper. A rocket engine is a jet engine that uses the principle of momentum, and it carries its own propellant without relying on outside air. A rocket engine is a type of jet engine that turns the reactant, propellant, in a propellant tank or vehicle into a high dot speed jet. The thrust is generated by Newton's third law of motion. When he began to draw the design, a large amount of relevant information automatically appeared in his mind. The information seemed to form countless symbols in his mind, weaving around and colliding with each other to produce new ideas. This knowledge was already at Raymond's fingertips, and using his brain, as well as his arms, he expressed it on paper in the form of patterns. His drawing was neat and meticulous, even more perfect than those drawn by real designers. They were filled with a mechanic kind of beauty. However, he did not realize that not far from him, a miniature pinhole camera had captured his whole drawing and shown it to the entire human race through a live broadcast. At that moment, the audience was dumbfounded. They watched as Raymond read book after book on mechanics and thermodynamics. They watched as Raymond searched for white paper and pencils in the library. They also watched as he calmed himself down and began to draw on the A4 paper. Countless people did not know what to say for a moment. Then, the bullet screen was filled with comments. All of them consisted of a loss for words or question marks. After a long while, the bullet comments returned to normal, and the audience started to discuss. Oh, my God! What is he drawing? It looks like an engine. I'm not sure. It's an engine, and judging from the structural direction and the markings, it appears to be the engine of a rocket. No way. What is this contestant trying to do? Why is he drawing that? Has he really gone mad? As expected, 
we really can't guess the thoughts of the poor. Every step he takes has exceeded our expectations. Amazing, amazing. Regardless of what he's doing, he can't possibly think that he can draw a rocket engine just because he's read a few books on mechanics and thermodynamics, right? No way, no way. Don't tell me that someone really thinks that they can fly just because they know some theoretical knowledge. The bullet comments were densely packed. Some people had made out the starting point of Raymond's drawing of a rocket engine, while others thought that he had gone completely mad. There was a lot of controversy. Most of the people in the group did not know anything about mechanics or thermodynamics. Those who knew what mechanics were, however, did not even blink. They just stared at the screen. They all watched as the outline of a rocket engine design began to take form on paper, and Raymond filled in the details on the formed outline. The lines were densely packed, and the structure was comprehensive. Chapter 8 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The Old Professor's Shock Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Over at a research institute in the United States, an old man with white hair and a face full of wrinkles was alarmed. He came before the live broadcast and watched Raymond's every move. Gradually, he became more and more shocked. He really drew a design for a rocket engine. He managed that just by reading a few books. No, this is not right. His design plan shows an improved version of the engine. It almost solves all the shortcomings of a current rocket engine. For example, the ignition pressure cycle can't react with the fuel and oxidant. Meanwhile, the pipes, fuel, and oxidant tank must be able to withstand a certain amount of high temperature and pressure. Another instance is the shortcoming of the expansion and extrusion cycle. The regenerative cooling system is too complicated. Also, the existence of the liquid dot borne pipes don't completely comply with the third law of mechanics. He actually. He actually completely overcame these shortcomings. Hurry. Hurry up and prepare a piece of paper in the same size for me. I want to personally draw the same engine design as this person. The old man had an excited expression, and his voice sounded like a low growl. A similar scene unfolded almost all over the world, especially in the major countries. Nearly every talent in this field was mobilized. Without a doubt, these people started to follow Raymond step by step once they became aware of him. Although verification was still needed on whether it could be improved, Raymond's blueprint was already the most correct guide. An improved version of a rocket engine was just too important. If achieving human flight was going from zero to one, then an improved rocket engine was also a jump from one to two. The news could not be hidden. When news of these scientists drawing Raymond's blueprint spread, the world once again went into an uproar. Oh, my God, it can't be that serious, right? Is this young man from the slums playing for real? There are already many videos on the internet that show proof of some scientists following Raymond's blueprint. Even if he isn't playing for real, it doesn't look like he's faking it. Soon, Raymond finished drawing the last stroke. Right then, the design of an engine fully materialized on the piece of paper that was 4 to 5 square meters in size. The neat lines were extremely detailed, depicting everything from the overall outline to every screw. Raymond put down the pencil, and his right hand felt a little numb. Shaking his hand, Raymond thought to himself, System, can you check it? After all, he had drawn the design based on the knowledge in his mind. He did not know if it would be practical or not. Now that he could not ask others for help, Raymond could only get the system to check it. Host, the design is perfect. Once the engine is made according to this blueprint, it can be used. Raymond breathed a sigh of relief. In just a few hours, he had gone from being a noob to drawing the design of a rocket engine. No matter how he thought about it, it felt like a dream. However, humans had suddenly vanished from the world, so what else could he not accept? What else do I need to learn next? Raymond asked again. Please learn mathematics and physics next, host. 
the system then issued him another mission. Okay, Raymond agreed silently. Outside, in the international live broadcast room. Maggie said, it's 11 o'clock sharp for our international event. Three hours have passed since the program started. Among the five contestants, one has been smashing things up to vent his anger, the second has been shooting into the sky, the third has been aimlessly walking on the streets like a walking corpse, and the fourth has been looking for supplies and food. As for the fifth. The contestant from the American slums, Raymond, has done something beyond the people's expectations, and it's been extremely controversial. According to the latest news from the program team, the design of the rocket engine that he drew has been repeatedly verified, and it can, in fact, be manufactured. Plus, this design of his has improved upon all the shortcomings of current engines, and it has been praised by countless scientists. The global audience was once again in an uproar. They had originally thought that Raymond had gone crazy, and it never occurred to them that the design he had drawn was actually real. How old was he? He was only 20.2 years old. Furthermore, before he started drawing the design, he had only come into brief contact with the relevant books. Before him, countless scientists had carried out experiments and research, yet they had not been able to improve the rocket engine. On the other hand, Raymond had used this little window of time to learn the required knowledge and was already able to draw a blueprint for an improved version of the rocket engine. It was too unbelievable, too awesome. Good God, I watched this program to see the evil side of human nature, but Raymond wants me to see how he designs an engine. So what if he drew a blueprint for a rocket engine? He can't possibly think that he'll be able to survive just because of that, right? As expected, the mind of the poor can never grasp the main point. There were still people who mocked Raymond. Thought these people were a little twisted. They thought that the poor individuals from the slums could not perform well, so they should perform horribly and be ridiculed, as well as criticized, by the rest. Now, however, Raymond had performed very well. It was like a direct slap to their faces, preventing them from saying the words that filled their stomachs. How could they stand it? Therefore, the better Raymond performed, the more uncomfortable they felt, and the more they wanted to ridicule and slander him. Anyway, now that Raymond has proven himself to be talented, will he continue to participate in the program a netizen asked. Actually, many viewers were also puzzled about this. Logically speaking, such a talent would definitely enter the Academy of Sciences, enjoy excellent treatment, and contribute to the country. Would he continue to participate in the program then? However, at that moment, someone posted a tweet. I think that since we have selected a certain contestant, we should go through with it. At the very least, we must persevere through this first season. If there's a change in contestant midway, we might as well not watch this program. Although this tweet had just been posted, it had already occupied the top searches. Comments, likes, and reposts had reached close to 10 million in number. Many people supported the poster's point of view. Hee <laughs> hee who posted this. Their intentions are sinister. It should be one of those so dot called rich people who are waiting to see Raymond make a fool of himself. Not everyone hopes for good things in the world, and not everyone hopes to see Raymond showcase his excellence. The more outstanding Raymond is, the more uncomfortable it will be for those who don't like him, and the more they'll hate him. They might even accuse Young of being a threat to Raymond's safety if he continues to do better. Sigh, I even feel a little sorry for him. He hasn't done anything wrong. His only fault is being someone from the slums. Plus, he's so talented. Yeah, when your background doesn't match your talent, danger comes knocking. Chapter 9 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The contestants' attitudes. The contrast is clear. Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless fantasy translation in a manner in the United States, an elderly man was sitting in a chair. He was looking at the design in front of him and gesturing toward it with his fingers. This man was called Antonio Ian, and he was the founder of the rocket launching field. 
From the first Apollo rocket landing on the moon to the dozens of rockets that had flown into the sky, the old man's shadow was everywhere. He stood at the top of the field. Antonio Ian looked at the design and remained silent for a long time. He then let out a long breath. Actually, this improvement is not complicated, but I just never thought of it before. Antonio Ian could feel it. The young man responsible had drawn this design and applied all his knowledge of mechanics, control, and passion to the best of his ability. Otherwise, he would not have gotten the idea to improve it. Right then, he saw a huge screen flash not far from him. Raymond was about to study again. Antonio Ian was speechless. What Raymond had done before, study and draw the design of the engine, had been an extremely nerve racking thing. Did this young man not need rest? Besides, what was he going to do this time? Raymond had already started to study again. This time, there was a large pile of mathematics and physics books beside him. He could read ten lines at a glance and flip the pages as fast as possible. Contestant Raymond has once again entered study mode. This time, it's mathematics and physics. What is his goal in studying this time? We'll wait and see, Maggie said right on cue. The audience's curiosity was also piqued. With the previous rocket engine as a reference, many people were looking forward to what Raymond would continue to do now. However, some people did not feel the same. His rocket engine design is already his greatest achievement in life. He will stop there. Heh, I think so too. What happened before was just a fluke. I don't believe that he'll be so lucky this time around. As everyone knows, mathematics and physics are the most difficult of all subjects. He should be looking at the number of days. He can't digest what he can't understand, the comments above are leaving a bad taste in my mouth. They can't stand the sight of good people. Reading Raymond's book was boring, so many people temporarily shifted their attention to the other four contestants. South Korea's Park Hyun Dat-yo was still around the police station, shooting everything in his sight and bursting out in unbridled laughter. It was as if shooting stuff around the police station was a very exciting thing. Meanwhile, the Russian novelist, Zyman Wierenski had wandered into a bookstore. As he walked around the bookstore, he began to set it on fire. Not long after, the fire soared into the sky, and the light from the flames illuminated Zyman Wierenski's face. Humans have disappeared, and soon, I will also disappear and die. Books have no meaning of existence anymore. Die with me, die with me, die with the entire human race, he mumbled. After collecting a large amount of food, as well as supplies, the chairman of the British company, Aaron Bob, took off his clothes and started to prance around on the streets. Hey, look at the Japanese contestant. He's driving a car. Where is he going? At this time, an audience member posted a bullet point that pulled the netizen's attention to Miyoshi Yamada. They saw him get into a car and drive to a villa. This is the home of Miyoshi Yamada's company chairwoman, Ms. Chiyoko. What is Miyoshi Yamada doing here? Maggie explained to the audience. Good God, I know this Chiyoko. She's in her twenties, big dot breasted, fair dot skinned, and beautiful. Miyoshi Yamada wouldn't have any wild thoughts, would he? I'm looking forward to it. Miyoshi Yamada opened the car door violently and entered the villa. First, he vandalized the surrounding decorations, tables, and chairs. Then, he went upstairs and opened one room after another as if he was looking for something. Finally, he arrived in a bedroom. The bedroom was beautifully decorated, and there were a few portraits on the wall. They were images of Chiyoko herself. Miyoshi Yamada opened the wardrobe and took out a pair of underwear. Following that, he placed it on the tip of his nose and began to sniff it like a maniac. 666, F asterisk CK, I knew it. He definitely wouldn't be up to anything good here. Is this Japan's elite office worker? F asterisk CK, I've seen it with my own eyes. He's so f asterisk king perverted. Baka. 
how could you do such a thing? Change the contestant. Suggest that the program team switch Miyoshi Yamada out. We can't afford to lose face. The Japanese netizens were going crazy with anger. Up until now, Miyoshi Yamada had done the most ridiculous and embarrassing things out of all the others. He was in stark contrast to Raymond. At that moment, in another villa in Japan, a young woman was watching the entire scene. This person was none other than Chiyoko. B asterisk starred, B asterisk starred. How could he do this? Chiyoko gritted her teeth, and an angry roar escaped her throat. One could imagine that right then, her husband was not the only one embarrassed by Yamada's actions. She was embarrassed too. Her good friends, family, colleagues, partners, and others would eventually discover the scene. When that time came, it would play in their minds the moment they saw her. How could she face those around her? This Miyoshi Yamada. She had always treated him well. Damn it. However, at that moment, Chiyoko's pupils contracted slightly. Via the live broadcast, she saw Miyoshi Yamada take off his pants and wrap her underwear around his unspeakable thing as he carried out unspeakable acts. The bullet comments in the international live broadcast room exploded once again. I understand now. This person must have been obsessing over his boss, and he's taking this opportunity to besmirch her. Chiyoko's very beautiful. I also have my own ideas, to be honest. Shocking. A man in his thirties is doing such a thing in his chairwoman's home. Is this a distortion of human nature or depravity of morality? I'm already beginning to look forward to the program team arranging female roles. What would happen if Miyoshi Yamada met a woman at this point? Would he directly pounce on her and stage a worldwide gender war in front of the entire human race? Just thinking about it makes my blood boil. I strongly suggest that the program team quickly arrange female roles. Suggestion, plus one. Plus one. Chapter 10 You are listening at NovelFull.audio He was actually deducing the third cosmic velocity. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation A few minutes later After Miyoshi Yamada's body shook violently, he stopped what he was doing. The scene was a complete mess. Then, as though he was bored of everything, he lay down on Chiyoko's bed, closed his eyes, and fell asleep. The bullet screen was filled with derision and ridicule. Yamada's lewd behavior had turned Japan into an international laughing stock. Naturally, Raymond did not know what was happening outside. He had already read all the books on mathematics and physics. Currently, he had mastered linear algebra, geometry, number theory, non-dot standard analysis, function theory, calculus, operations research, quantum mathematics, and other branches of knowledge in the mathematics field. As for the field of physics, he had mastered classical mechanics, optics, acoustics, structure, and explosive mechanics. The spaceship's flight cannot bypass the speed of the universe. The system allows the host to learn these two subjects so that the host can deduce the first cosmic velocity, the second cosmic velocity, the third cosmic velocity all the way to the ninth cosmic velocity. At this time, the system also planned the next step for Raymond. Deduce cosmic velocity. Raymond knew that in this world, the first and second cosmic velocity had already been deduced. However, he naturally would not look for the answer because that would be meaningless. Looking at the answer 10,000 times was not as important as personally deducing something. Raymond prepared a stack of A4 paper again and took out a pencil. The first cosmic velocity deduction formula is F equals GMM slash R equals MV slash R. From this formula, we can get GM equals GR to solve V equals GR our ground is equal to 6.37 times 10 M, G equals 9.8 meters per second, square it and get V equals 7. 9 kilometers per second, where F is the gravitational force between two objects. Raymond used the pencil to write down the cause and effect of the deduction as well as the formula. 
After writing it down, he was still disappointed with the system's inspection. The host's deduction is accurate, that after obtaining the system's confirmation, Raymond continued to deduce the second cosmic velocity. The entire scene was naturally captured by the pinhole camera in the distance. Am I seeing things? He's actually deducing cosmic velocity. He's deducing cosmic velocity and coming up with a design for a rocket engine. Is Raymond going to fly into the sky? Perhaps he feels that since the entire human race has disappeared, it's meaningless to stay alone on Earth. So, he's decided to prepare for an interstellar journey. I'm dying of laughter. Interstellar journey. Being able to create something that can fly up to 10 stories high is amazing enough, but he still wants to fly beyond that. Up to this point, humans have personally just landed on the moon. An interstellar journey is too much of an exaggeration. I'm still of the same opinion. Raymond snapped a long time ago. His mind is no longer under his control. He's aimless and whimsical. Maybe he really has gone mad. Many people could not keep up with Raymond's thought process. They could only subjectively believe that Raymond was indeed abnormal. Those scientists who had previously praised him were also somewhat uncertain now. Could Raymond have really gone mad and the previous rocket engine design just been a coincidence? System, is the deduction of the second cosmic velocity correct? In the library, Raymond had already deduced the second cosmic velocity. Responding to host. It's completely correct. Raymond nodded silently before he took out a brand new piece of A4 paper and wrote a line of words on it. The third cosmic velocity. Those several words made all the viewers around the world tense up. Everyone knew that countless scientists and physicists had been studying Earth for decades, but they still had not been able to deduce the third cosmic velocity. The so-called third cosmic velocity was only a concept in the eyes of most people. Otherwise. There would have already been human footprints on Mars by now if the third cosmic velocity had been figured out. Does that sentence really read, the third cosmic velocity? Please tell me. I'm beginning to suspect that there's something wrong with my ability to read. I can't believe it either. This is unbelievable. He definitely can't figure it out. Numerous scientists have been trying and failing to crack this mystery for decades, but he can. Impossible. The netizens discussed animatedly. They were once again shocked by Raymond's actions. The third cosmic velocity. Can he deduce it? In a certain manner in the United States, Antonio Ian was staring intently at the live broadcast while subconsciously gripping his pen. That scene was playing out all over the world. Plenty of scientists were fully focused at this moment staring at the somewhat thin figure on the screen. The process of deducing the third cosmic velocity was several times more difficult than deducing the second cosmic velocity. It was extremely complicated. Whenever Raymond wrote a sentence, countless scientists before the screen would copy it. Before this, they would never have thought that one day they would be copying someone else's notes. When Raymond had finished writing on three pieces of A4 paper, he finally put down the pen in his hand. In the manner in the United States, Antonio Ian stared blankly at the paper in front of him. He has deduced it. This is the third cosmic velocity. So many top scientists have studied it for decades but still failed to grasp the knowledge. He has actually deduced it, he dot muttered to himself. What was the expression on his face? It was of shock, incredulity, and disbelief. He had been called a genius for decades, but he realized that he was far from being a genius in comparison to this young man. He was not worthy of being called a genius at all. Before Raymond, no one was worthy of being called a genius. Only Raymond himself was. Knock knock. Right then, someone knocked on the door. Come in, Antonio Ian said in a wooden voice. His assistant walked in gently and asked, Professor, the program team is asking if Raymond's deduction of the third cosmic velocity is correct. Yes, it is correct. Antonio Ian nodded. 
his assistant backed out and closed the door. In the global live broadcast room, Maggie quickly received the news and spoke in a perplexed tone. According to the latest news from the program, Raymond's deduction of the third cosmic velocity is absolutely correct. Professor Antonio Ian himself confirmed it. The moment her voice fell, an uncountable number of scientists around the world were shocked. Those among the ordinary people who did not know Antonio Ian were also shocked upon checking out his information. The whole world was once again taken aback by the young man from the American slums.